Like the hair? Hater's gonna say it's fake. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Vicious RV in Coldwater, Michigan with the RV that I personally think, for my money, if I was a first time RVer getting started today, this I think is the best family starter camper for my money on the market. And that's a big statement, I'm willing to back it up. And I say that because I actually used a 264 J flight to cut my teeth in my adult camping years versus my childhood camping years. And I have no idea what we had back then. But the point is, this floor plan, it's simple, it's easy, it's no slides, it has enough seating for everybody. You've got campsite window coverage, you have plenty of sleeping. It's got a taller ceiling, which I personally enjoy as somebody who's a little bit bigger. Um, also, the, uh, the bunks are rated for more weight with thicker bunk mats. So if your kids sleep better, everybody has a better day tomorrow there's also far more peace of mind features on this like not just plywood floor decking but plywood roof decking which kind of taps into the fact that this has double the warranty of pretty much anybody else offered a camper in this class you've also got things like um, factory standard Goodyear tires that not they're not exclusive in doing this anymore in this class but they are one of the very few still doing that it's prepped and ready for rear and side view cameras you can enclose the belly you can actually put a ladder on it instead of having to get a portable telescopic ladder and then have to store it somewhere there's just so many more easy livable factors that go into these that actually used to be their slogan Jayco said they made the most livable RVs and they really still do they just don't talk about that very much now the RV definitely has a couple hiccups and hang-ups I'm gonna try to share things like the fact that it does have a short queen bed up front but maybe if there's something you could do about that as we go and if you appreciate that kind of fair look at this make sure you hit that subscribe button and buckle up because we've got a lot more in store and you know if you didn't know any better, the color of this matches the color of this so well, it almost does look like it's mine, although I own it now. It is mine now. It's mine. Now, I really need to begin uh, a J-Flight tour by giving you some housekeeping notes real quick. I mentioned that I'm at my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store. We are very, very close to Middlebury, Indiana, where these J-Flights are produced. Um, the J-Flights that come out of that facility very slightly in a couple key different ways from the ones built out of the uh, Idaho facility. So if you look at a J-Flight at one of our more Western stores versus Midwestern stores or whatever, it very well may have a couple key differences. Now, no matter what, we're looking at plenty of different optional equipment today. Like we're looking at the modern farmhouse, like white kitchen. You do have a choice of the uh, the cottage. That's what it's called. The, the, the little um, cottage brown decor, if that's your preference. Now you can see anywhere that there's windows with the exception of the one right behind this faucet right there or in the entry door, any like sidewall window is going to open for airflow. This thing is carpetless, it's ventless. Those are another couple easy cleaning kind of factors that, that again, really work to the benefit of a first time RVer. But there's some clutch details here like the fact that this has a taller ceiling and centralized air. If you're shopping for your first RV, you may not realize not every RV has centrally ducted air conditioning. So when you've got all your privacy curtains drawn or that bathroom door is closed, not every RV is going to, uh, you know, cool as evenly. Now, a couple more under the skin details here. The uh, cabinetry that we're looking at, um, the styles and rails, which is like the box of the cabinet, basically, those are all pocket screwed. It's called lumber core cabinetry, where it does have kind of like a sticker wrap on it, but it is actual screws into wood. They don't use stapled fasteners in their cabinet construction. This floor plan what has just a, a, it's a classic floor plan, and it has an awesome feature that people still love today. Big windows overlooking the campsite of the RV. So if you're, I'm sitting on the sofa right now, and if you look over toward the door side of the RV, you actually have pretty decent coverage. Now, certainly I'm doing a big time neck twist to look up in, at that bedroom side window, but the fact is pretty much anywhere you're at in the living area of this RV, if you hear your kids screaming bloody murder outside, you can eyeball it real, real fast to decide, you know, do I need to parent this thing or do I need to let them fight it out and learn a lesson or something like that? You know, that's one of the hard things about parenting. You know, it doesn't really come with a manual when it comes to that sort of thing. <laughs> now, if you know me, one of the very first things I do with a camper like this is I would take out those pedestal posts 
and uh, I'd put a set of free floating legs on there. One of the cool things on a Jayco, though, they do actually recess those posts right there. They do core out a little bit of a, uh, a, a mount into the plywood floor decking on this so that it is a, a little more stable and it's not so much of a toe kick, which is cool. We are looking at the optional television on this one, so a little bit more of a rainy day um, survival option on this. But what's kind of cool is for the 23 season, if you do option a TV into these, it is a 4K smart TV. Not a giant one, but it ain't a big camper. You know, you're not that far from it. I, I think it kind of fits the bill. Your uh, upper and lower bunks, I need I need to clarify something. I need to rectify something I said. I said your sidewall windows open for airflow. Apologies, that one does not. Oh yeah, these are my um, sofa armrest pillows that are totally portable. I, I wondered where I stuffed them when I was doing all my footage. Anyway, there you go. You also see you got the USB outlets up there. And remember that little bit taller ceiling that I talked about means you have about an extra inch and a half available on every one of these. Now, this is kind of cool that Jayco does this. It's literally called the Dangler. It tells you how much the bunks are rated for. Since these beds are double-sized, that means that it's the 600-pound variety because it's intended to be able to handle, you know, two people. They're also using bigger, thicker bunk mattresses, which is nice. Um, and if you're, if you're curious, like sometimes people say, why can't, why don't you tell me the measurements of the dinette, the sofa, the bunks? I've had people ask me, why don't you measure out the kitchen countertop in every one of these? Like, there's no way... I can really possibly get all the different measurements everybody asks for, but Jayco does give you a little bit of a cheat code if you know where to look. On the uh, Android or iPhone, uh, you know, app store, whatever you want to call it, look up a thing called Jayco Sales Toolkit. And it's not really about sales. It's about weights and measures and specs. And it has all of that stuff on a per floor plan basis broken down with far more detail than they publish on their website. So that is a really handy, like under the skin pro tip there for you from your uncle Josh. Now what's really cool about that, you're thinking, okay, yeah, that's fine, but I'm not necessarily shopping for a Jayco RV. What good is that to me? A lot of manufacturers have very similarly sized things. So if you're looking at a similar floor plan from a different manufacturer, one of the things that you can do is download the Jayco sales toolkit app. And generally speaking, Dinette dimensions from one brand to the next are very similar. Sofa dimensions are very similar because they tend to get things from many similar suppliers. So the Jayco Sales Toolkit app can literally help you shop and be informed for other brands when you're uh, you know, browsing and deciding how to spend your hard-earned money. Now, we've kind of taken a little bit of a look at everything here. You saw how there's that extra headroom in the shower, which is great. You've actually got the butt neck controller where you can reach it there. But let's, no pun intended, saying but right there, let's look at a little bit more detail. Starting down here, this actually has dinette doors to get down to the storage, which is cool. You could always lift the top off that as well. Um, one of the differences between the Indiana built units and the um, uh, Idaho built units is that these Eastern units have just a mirror mirror on the wall. They do not actually have a, uh, a, a medicine cabinet. And if I could change one thing on this RV, that would be it. Personally, if I truly had my choice, I would like to see the Eastern and the Western units homogenized so that they're all just the same. I don't like having two different specs. It, it, you know, it makes this video confusing and I'm doing the best I can to try to explain it. But unless you see it side by side, it's really tough to kind of break all that down, you know? Like the Western units have a little bit bigger fridge. I wish that they were all just the same, personally. Now, you may have noticed, you know, the dinette, the uh, the sofa can all fold down into sleepers. And I'd be kind of curious to know, what do you think about that, like, 40% privacy wall plus curtain that they do right here for this front bedroom? Would you prefer, like, do you like it as is? Because there is, uh, there are, well, there are, if I'm going to speak properly, TV hookups for the bedroom on the back side of this thing. Or would you prefer... Um, no bedroom partition, or would you prefer a full bedroom privacy wall? Uh, because brands like Salem Wildwood and Cherokee, they do a full wide open design. Um, East to West, Delaterra does a private bedroom with a wall and a door. So that's the thing. There's, uh, like I said, for my money, this is the RV that really works very well for me, but that doesn't mean it's the very best one possible. It just means it's the one that, 
you know, I could live with. The things that might be a point of current, uh, concern or consideration for you, maybe they don't bother me. There's also little details I've noticed. Like as someone who goes camping, if you've never RV'd before, you don't think about this, but where are you hanging a jacket, a coat? It doesn't have a lot of allowance for that. One of the cool things though, with this being a stick-built wood stud trailer, every 16 inches, you got a stud that you can tap into on the wall. So get the stud finder, hold it up to your chest and go, yup, there's one. And then beep, 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 you know, find that stud. And you can put like a little family coat hanger wall or something up right there. That would be very, very handy. Uh, it'd be something I would like at least. But again, trying to share some good with the bad with you. You may have noticed, it's cool that they have struts below this bed, like ZZ Top, she's got the strut, but that is a short queen. There is room here for a true queen. It will require a little bit of a travel trailer two-step. You're gonna do the butt scoop boogie against that 40% privacy wall, but you can do it. And if you do choose to get one uh, with the optional solar package or add solar right there, that's where the controller is located. Or if it's just prepped to be a sticker, it says, put your controller over here. But one of the handy things on this RV, normally I close up slides on RVs and show them in road mode. With this having no slide, one of the cool things about it, it's always road mode ready. As long as you can put the steps down on the outside, and since it's only a two-step, that's not real hard. Basically, if you're at a roadside stop, or if you pull into a campsite late at night, something I've done, uh, because we, I don't know about you, we never leave uh, on time ever. And we always end up stopping at McDonald's before we really hit the road. Anybody else have the, the traditional McDonald's, you know, sandwich uh, kind of uh, stop? Anyway, my point is, I've rolled into campsites way, way late, and I didn't want to make a lot of noise and disturb my neighbors. I figured I could finish setting up and do my jacks and everything in the morning. With a no-slide camper like this, I backed the camper in, left it hooked up to the truck, flip the steps down, we hop inside, sleep for the night, and then in the morning we can take our time and get ready once we're refreshed and we got all the road off of us, you know? It's one of the really nice things about no slides, not to mention less to keep up, less to worry about, and that's the kind of stuff why I think this is such a good first time uh, family camper right here. Now, one of the other excellent things about this one are its towability factors. So if you notice uh, empty, this one is around the 4,900 pound mark and fully loaded, it's about 6,000 pounds. That makes it accessible by so many like everyday vehicles. You don't necessarily need to get a big three quarter ton heavy duty diesel to handle something like this. You know, a lot of people, the general half ton that you have laying around, maybe if you have one of the larger class SUVs with a solid tow package and you put good hitching, you know, this could be something that you could, uh, you know, wrestle around pretty comfortably. So that's one of the other things. You don't, you know, have to go broke buying a, a, a big expensive truck that frankly is hard to get a hold of right now and very expensive. I think I said expensive twice, but that's how expensive they are. So expensive, we're gonna say them twice. Now, one of the 23 updates, they swapped away from the corrugated skin on the nose and they went to an extra thick aluminum nose sweep here. Very similar to, you know, Cherokee, Salem, Wildwood, a lot of brands like that. I just think, I personally, I like the look of it. Now, we are prepped and ready for rear and side view cameras, but you can kind of life hack this a little bit. You could, um, <coughs> pardon me, take the, camera monitor and you could keep that inside the RV and you could power that up and if you're like inside cooking or something like that you could use that monitor to basically check on the kids outside if you hear a crazy loud noise or something like that or if you hear a crazy noise you know a little thing go bump in the night you can check out if it's your buddy Rick the raccoon or if you can see if it's Barry the bear coming to root through your garbage the one you can chew off. The other one, I recommend you just uh, you hunker down and, and just hope he doesn't come and knocking uh, like a gas station murder hobo. Now, they have gone standard with these new um, Liberty Quick Drop stabilizers. And uh, basically, if you're familiar with the idea of strong arm stabilizer jacks, that's essentially what this has built into it. And what it will do is uh, when those things are down, there's a little visual guide. You can make sure that the RV is properly stabilized and have a visual reference point to ensure that as people move around, shift around, hop down out of the bunks at night, they don't wiggle jiggle the whole camera camper around, which is kind of nice. Now we do have, uh, again, standard Goodyear endurance radials. On this camper, there's 65 PSI, which means a general gas station air pump could pump those things back up. But, wow. Loud truck, sorry about that. We are right next to the highway right here. Um, uh, here's a uh, recommended life hack for you, a little camping survival tip from Uncle Josh. 
get if especially if you're going on long distance camping trips get one of those things that's like a combination 12 volt jump start pack and air compressor you will not not regret having that thing first of all it's it's nice just to give you an extra battery source just in case you got to get out of dodge for some reason like you know you accidentally drain the battery maybe yours does doesn't have a solar package i don't know they are very very handy it's literally how i do my work here um the uh with those battery packs the other thing is with that built-in air compressor even if it's not pumping up the tires maybe you want to pump up the jam a little more and get your booty on the dance floor or you could actually just use it to uh you know inflate the kids toys or something like that you saw the optional enclosed underbelly this is another interesting option they don't do a full camp kitchen option out here but they do allow you the option of adding a fridge into that compartment now I've only really talked about that before in this channel. I've never really shown that before. So I'd really like to farm some feedback. Is that something you would want on one of these? Would you like that refrigerator? Because the thing is, we have this one very heavily optioned. Chances are, um, you know, you can find somebody else that builds this floor plan for a chunk less money. Question is, what is it not going to have included on it that maybe you want, maybe you don't. Now this is, man, that is dangerously close to being a propanus, but since the gas does not come out the backside, that is technically a propane cooker hooker. So, by virtue of the fact that you have the outside fridge and you got the little cooker hooker coming off the side, you can kind of build your own camp kitchen, albeit with no sort of sink fixture. Uh, once again, uh, these are always at least prepped for a, uh, a ladder on the back end, and as you see, you can option one on to get you up to that Magnum Truss walkable roof. One of the major differences on your Jayco roofs though, is they're not OSB decked, they're plywood decked. So that, God forbid, you do have some kind of leak somewhere, plywood will expand when it gets wet, just like OSB. But once OSB is compromised, it's just mush, plywood will generally return to shape and it's not completely toast, unless you leave it that way for a long time and let it rot, obviously. Now this is not made to be some big mega lifted up off-road kind of camper or anything like that. It doesn't have massive holding tank capacities, although the Western built units do have far more freshwater capacity. So the uh, the sewer tank right there doesn't, or the, uh, the outlet doesn't have the world's biggest ground clearance. But what is nice, you do have a black flush, you have an, uh, a hot cold outside camp utility shower, you have some very handy little detail features like that now when we were up on the roof of this sucker you did get a look at that uh again that overlander one uh optional solar package at the very least these will always be prepped for a uh, uh a roof solar package although as you're seeing you can get them straight from the factory or give us a shout we can help customize something for you or if you're handy you can diy something and save some money anytime you can peel out labor money you're going to save some cash certainly Notice too how all the windows are uh, fully UV tinted. Let me ask you guys, what is your preference? You have basically three window options uh, in this class. You have fully tinted like we're looking at right here. You have mirrored like the Cherokee group is kind of doing. Um, you also have absolutely zero tint. There's still some brands doing something like that. What is your hierarchy? What is your pecking order? How do you like your windows to look? on a camper like this, tinted, mirrored, or just straight clear. And as long as we're asking questions, I've got one more for you. What do you think about the idea of a fiberglass skin on this camper instead of an aluminum skin? Now this is a different floor plan behind us, but J flights for the 2023 season do have the ability to option fiberglass onto them. Now to give you a little extra info to help you make this decision here, um, fiberglass will cost more it will weigh more because you're actually adding basically three-eighths of plywood below the fiberglass skin uh, it doesn't actually change the skeleton to a laminated skeleton it's just a fiberglass skin like a Cherokee black label if you're familiar with that very similar where it's really nice it cleans easier arguably it might look better but if you live in hail country <laughs> the outside of your camper won't look like Woody Woodpecker went <laughs> all over that thing not my best Woody Woodpecker but it'll do so when we began I said for my money, I think this is the best first timer RV out there, pound for pound overall. That doesn't mean it's the best for everybody. It doesn't mean nothing else is worth considering. It just means that this one speaks to me a little bit louder. 
There's plenty of other people who build floor plans like this. I'll leave you some links in the video description to check out a few others. Cherokee, East to West, Salem Wildwood certainly make some very, very good versions of something like this, as do plenty of brands. So I'd love it if you took a look at one of those. And then on this video or any of those videos, leave me a comment and let me know which one would you go with and what is it that kind of made or broke that sort of equation. I'll also leave you a link to this one's next step up big brother and it's next step down little brother, just in case you wanna see what other sizes might be out there. And as always a link to check pricing and availability at any of our stores, because remember the ones out West, the ones here in the East, there are a couple slight little differences. Those little things do affect the price tag a little bit, not to mention shipping from store to store. That link in the description is always the best way to tell you how much each individual RV you might be looking at is specifically priced and how close they are to you. So how easy it is to take one home. So when you're ready, we'd love to work with you. And it's cool to swing by and take a look, even if you're not buying today, we'd love to meet. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank <music> you.